Hi guys, today we are going to see how to build a small solar power system for your home or shed. Here we will be looking at the bare minimum components needed to make this setup, how to properly set them up, and in the end I will show you how to use the solar power you generate. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Now let's get to it. First, I want you to take a piece of paper and plan out exactly what you're going to power with your solar power system. How much power the component is going to consume. Next, I want you to calculate for 24 hours how much power you will need so that you can calculate your battery storage uh, from that and a third important thing what time of the day you're using you're going to use the solar power because now let's say you're using solar power during the daytime like a solar garden pump a water pump or something in that instance you're getting the solar power directly from the panels. So you can uh, get away with a small uh, battery, like a small lead acid car battery, SLI battery. These are the cheapest batteries available. But if you are planning to uh, use the solar power at night also, then you'll have to go with a battery which accepts deeper discharges, such as uh, lead acid batteries, such as the AGM and gel type or else you'll have to go with the lithium based batteries those are very expensive and this is an important decision because the battery is the most expensive component in your system and is the component which frequently fails early as well so the battery has to be planned out properly i'll make a separate video on this uh, topic of how to size the panel how to size your system later on okay Now let's take a look at the components you're going to need. Number one is your solar panel. Next, you're going to need a charge controller. Third is the battery. And fourth, you're going to need thick gauge wires. This one is coming from my solar panel. And finally, now once you've got things set up, how are you going to use it? If you are planning to use 12 volt DC appliances, such as those that work in RVs, then you don't need an inverter. But if you're planning to use home appliances, which run on 220 volts AC, then you're going to need one of these things, a solar power inverter. Now the first thing, you have to set up the solar panel. I have already set mine up and the wire is coming down through here. That's my uh, panel wire. Now you have to set it up on the highest possible location you can get, like the rooftop, so that it will be in direct sunlight throughout most of the day. I have made a separate video if you want, you can have a look at that on how to properly place your solar panels to get the maximum power output. Once that is set up, you have to run wires down up to your charge controller. Remember, the solar panel has to be closest to the charge controller and battery setup as possible. If not, you're going to lose a lot of uh, energy just on the wire itself. I am using thick wires here. This is actually the, the type of wire you will find which runs from the grid to your meter. It, this one will is able to supply, is able to handle around 30 amps of DC current easily. And currently my solar panel output is around 8 amps. So that's plenty for this uh, setup. Next, 
before connecting the solar panel you have to connect the battery to the charge controller let's see how it's done Okay, now I have con connected my battery to my charge controller. Always remember, before connecting the solar panel, you have to connect the battery to the charge controller. If you connect the solar panel's power directly to the charge controller without the battery, you are going to fry the charge controller, because all this power is going directly to the charge controller and there is no place for it to go. Currently. I am using a small cheap PWM solar charge controller. Basically there are two types. One is PWM, the other is MPPT. PWM charge controllers are cheaper but they only cap the panel's voltage so you won't be able to get the maximum power out of the battery. The amperage is not affected. MPPTs, on the other hand, use sophisticated electronics to adjust the voltage and increase the amperage so that you will get the maximum total output your panels are rated for. They are more expensive and also definitely worth it in larger setups. Now let's connect the solar panel to the charge controller. Okay, now we have set up our solar panel through the charge controller to charge our batteries. Now how do we use it? There are two methods. One is using the battery directly, such as in 12 volt appliances, or the other is by using a power inverter. The one which I have here is a pure sine wave uh, Chinese inverter. Let's have a look at both. Okay, so let's take these crocodile clips and clip both ends and now we have DC current here. Just for an example I'll show you how so directly you can connect this to a 12 volt appliance. Right? The other option, which I have here, is the inverter. Let's take a detailed look at how that's done. So what I have done here is I have connected this pure sine wave inverter to the battery setup. Always remember, when you're connecting the inverter, you have you have to use thick gauge wires when you're connecting the inverter to the battery because the amperage on these wires are going to be very high. So I'm using this inverter to power a mains 220 volt AC fan. You can use this inverter to power any AC appliance such as televisions, fridge, fans, you can you decide so this is how to build a small solar power setup if you like this video please hit the like button and share it among your friends so that you can help them out as well on their solar panel solar power projects thanks for watching